a lot of awesome games adopt modular level design. Just to name a few, Hades, Darkest Dungeon, Dead Cells, Rush Legacy. It greatly increases game development speed, but more importantly, it helps to increase replay value of your game. As with modular level design, it is easier to add more levels to your game regularly, or even add random level generation, or even add a level builder to let players build custom levels for other players. In this video, we will cover three things. How to create modular meshes using Unreal Engine modeling mode, how to set up the Unreal Engine editor to allow easy level building, and the last one, but not the least, how to create modular blueprints. Uh, but first, uh, we need to decide on two things. What is going to be a module, and how to combine the modules together. For the first one, let's agree on a 4x4x4 four by four by four meters cube. And for the second one, let's say we'll use a three-dimensional grid with the same cell size. For this tutorial, we will use modeling mode. If you don't have this here, you might need to enable the corresponding plugin. For this, go to Edit. Plugins, and then start typing modeling, and verify that you have this checked. You might need to restart your Unreal Engine after you enable it. In order to activate modeling mode, just go to this selector and select modeling. So let's build our modular meshes. We'll use boxes only for this one. So we are building our modular blocks around 4x4x4 four by four by four meter cube. And let's decide that the width of the walls should be like 10 centimeters. But here is the thing. We want our modular meshes to overlap with each other a little bit uh, in order to prevent gaps uh, of any sort, like in the corners. Like the other two dimensions, they are going to be a bit larger than to 400. Let's increase them by two widths of the wall like 420 here and 420 here. I'm copying this one in order to create the first modular mesh. This is going to be a forward section. And yeah, just checking that uh, it's aligned uh, properly. And yeah, it's uh, very useful to use uh, yeah, maybe even 90 degrees snapping for uh, rotation and 10 degrees for, for position. So I'm copy pasting this one and uh, yeah, let's clear, clear the ceiling by copying the floor and moving it up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it looks almost ready. So let's uh, copy it because it, it will be easier to build uh, other meshes based on this one. But it's like four separate meshes at the moment, so Let's use another tool from the modeling uh, mod. It's called uh, Merge. Yeah, let's call it uh, Sam uh, Tunnel Forward. So now it be became like a single object that can be moved around uh, all together. Okay, now let's uh, quickly create a, like a turn section. And we can simply do that by rotating this 90 degrees and then moving it to the right position. Yeah, but before merging it, let's uh, copy paste it. And now we can merge uh, these four meshes together. Let's call it a SAM uh, tunnel forward. Okay, the next one, yeah, is going to be really simple. The T junction. So basically, uh, when you come to a T-junction, you can go either left or right. For this, we just need to remove one wall. Okay, before the merge, let's copy it again. Move it aside. And merge these meshes. Okay, let's call it uh, static mesh T-junction. Okay, let's copy this uh, for the next uh, mesh. And yeah, this is even simpler. It's going to be a crossroads section. Yeah, let's call it uh, static mesh cross. And the last one we need is the dead end section. 
Okay, let's copy this wall. Uh, rotate it 90 degrees. Move it here. Copy this one. And place it here. So, looks good. Merge uh, these ones together. Let's call it uh, static mesh dead end. So now we have uh, five meshes uh, which can be used for building a modular level, like a tunnel or a dungeon of uh, some sort. Let's try playing with it a little bit. But first, let's save them to our project directory because uh, at the moment uh, they are in the random generated uh, folder here. So let's copy paste them to our like uh, project folder. And also remove this, uh, you know, uh, randomly generated uh, suffixes. Also, let's uh, name them consistently. Okay, so we have uh, static mesh tunnel cross, static mesh tunnel dead end, static mesh tunnel forward, static mesh tunnel T junction, and static mesh tunnel turn. Now, let's see how we can use them to build a modular level. So, this is a dead end section. Let's place it in the beginning, like of the coordinates, and try to attach. A forward tunnel to it like uh, what we can see that it's uh, quite difficult to arrange the sections against each other one option would be to specify coordinates by hand like we know that uh, the size of our section is like uh, 400 in all directions so we can do something like that but it's quite inefficient so only if we had uh, an option for 400 in the grid snapping size here. So we could uh, enable it and uh, like quickly snap our modules uh, in the right positions. Yeah, but there is no option for 400, but uh, luckily we can add it. For that, we can uh, go to Editor, Editor Preferences. Then uh, let's start typing grid. Snap, and here we have uh, an array of uh, grid sizes, so we can put uh, 400 here, or any other grid size you want. Let's place it accordingly, and uh, yeah, now we have 400. So it snaps uh, together as as we wanted. Uh, for example, let's say the next one would be T-junction. Yeah, as we can see, it snaps uh, to the position and we can easily like move it. And yeah, when uh, we already have uh, the section, it's easier to copy-paste it and move it uh, to the right place. And also the rotation snapping helps as well. So yeah, we're building our level bit by bit. So at this point, it's already really nice. You can build uh, a level of any shape quite easily, but it's quite dark here. Yeah, I mean, it's a very mysterious, but adding some light might help. So let's see how we can do that now. For that, we would need to create some blueprints. First, let's create a light source blueprint. Let's call it uh, BP Torch. Yeah, let's put simply one... Uh, light source in these blueprints. Uh, like, why do we need a blueprint for that? Uh, because uh, this way, if we put this blueprint to all sections of our, uh, like, like to all modules of our level, then we would be able to adjust uh, the color, the intensity, basically all the parameters. Maybe next, maybe in the future, we would uh, like to replace it with a real torch, like with a flame, with a wooden stick or something like that. and. Uh, as we already created a blueprint for that, we would uh, be able to replace it uh, easily with, a, with another one. 
Uh, then I created a parent class. Basically, it doesn't have anything. Uh, but I just uh, created a class and uh, parented it uh, from a static mesh actor. So if we uh, if uh, we inherit all our tonal sections from this uh, blueprint, we will be able to like uh, create arrays of it uh, for the game logic. Basically, process them in a uniform way if we need it later, for example, for random uh, level generation. And uh, yeah, the next step would be to create uh, a blueprint for every section of our tunnel. So, yeah, first we are inheriting from the tunnel section uh, blueprint, tunnel section class we just created. And then uh, in the class details, we simply need to, to specify. Uh, Sorry, in the class defaults, we need to specify the corresponding mesh. Okay, uh, we're specifying dead end here. And also, yeah, let's place uh, some lights. Like, I think three lights uh, are going to be enough. So yeah, basically I'm using the blueprint for the torch we just created. Like, we can put it here. Okay, let's save it and compile. So the next one would be, okay, let's do the forward section. The same thing, uh, we select the component. Uh, select the static mesh we created. Like adjust the position of light sources. Yeah, I already have them because I played a little bit uh, before recording this video, but you can simply place them uh, wherever you think they are good. And compile. Okay, 40 junction, one light uh, source is enough. And also the turn. Two light sources that will do the job. And then we need to create another one for the cross. Uh, we need to just change the static mesh. And remove the lights. Because there are no walls to attach them to. Okay, now let's try to play with the blueprints uh, we just created. Okay, let's start with a dead end. So now, like as soon we, like as we place, we also have lights. Yeah, let's build something uh, dark here. Yeah, just see how easily I can build uh, the level and it snaps uh, right into place. Okay, let's go inside and check it out. So now it's uh, lighted uh, nicely. Yeah, let's uh, basically see why we made it a blueprint. I will change the, just one parameter here, the color. Yeah, and uh, now we have this uh, color applied uh, to every light source uh, in our tunnel. Well, if uh, you watched this far, I think you are a real game dev uh, and a real engine enthusiast. So thanks for watching. And yeah, this video is uh, the first one uh, in the series of uh, videos uh, teaching how to create module level design. In the next videos, we'll see how we can uh, add random generation uh, using the same modular meshes we built today to basically uh, generate any number of levels we need. So please uh, consider liking or subscribing or both uh, if you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, see you in next videos. Bye-bye.